Welcome grade 12 to part 2 of the foreign exchange market. Alright, just a recap. From part 1, we learned that the balance of payment account has three sections. It has the current account section, it has the capital transfer account section, and the financial account section. But now we're going to look at an example of the first one, the current account. Uh, very important for exam purposes. All right, here is an example of a current account. We start off with merchandise exports. Now, exports, remember, bring money into the country. If we are exporting to other countries, they pay us. So we need to add exports. So we start off with merchandise exports, and then we add the net gold export. By the way, this uh, second account, the net gold export, you will only find in the South African current account. Because gold is our biggest export, our current account also has the net gold export. All right, then we add our receipts, the money that we receive. We've got service receipts, and we also got income receipts. Now, the imports, we need to subtract. When we get to merchandise imports, we need to subtract. Because, remember, imports means that we're buying from other countries. So, we're paying those countries. We're losing that money. We also subtract the payments the payment for services, and the income payments. Now, the last item or the last account, which is the current transfer, just before we get our balance, can either be negative or positive. It's negative in our example, meaning that there were goods and services that left the country, but we didn't get any income for them. So maybe we donated goods and services to other countries. That's why our current transfers account uh, is negative. It would be positive if there were goods and services that we got that we didn't pay for. But it's negative in this example, so we would subtract it so we can get our balance of the current account. Now, on the right-hand side of the slide, very important concept, how to calculate terms of trade. So how do we calculate terms of trade? very easy for terms of trade we only look at exports and imports so we would only look at the two export items on the left and the one import item the two export items we add and the one import item we subtract all right so let's do that quickly starting with merchandise exports we add the net gold exports Then we subtract the merchandise imports. All right, you can work this out for yourself. You will see that it comes to 503 and 175 million. Remember, all these amounts are in millions of rands. All right, moving on. All right, again, uh, another recap uh, from part one. We learned that there are three exchange rate systems. We've got the free floating. We've got the fixed or pegged exchange rate system. And we've got the managed floating exchange rate system. But again, we will only focus on number one, the free floating exchange rate system. And uh, if you'll remember, under this exchange rate system, the value of the currency is determined by demand and supply. All right, so let's look at an example of this. Okay, if you look on the left, we've got a graph. We've got a demand curve and, and a supply curve. And where those two meet, we've got the value or the price of the rent. And in this case, it is 10 rent. Right, so the demand and supply determine that price, the 10 rents. So now, if we look at the scenario on the right, what will happen if we've got an increase in exports, more exports? Now, remember, if we are exporting, that means the countries are buying from us. And how are they buying from us? They're using our rent. So this means that if there's more exports, the demand for the rent will increase. And an increase in demand is indicated by a shift in the demand curve to the right. 
So the Neumann curve will shift to the right from D to, let's say, D1. All right, the supply curve doesn't shift. Only the demand curve will shift to the right from D to D1. All right, so now if there's more demand for the rent and there's a shift in the demand curve, the equilibrium price will also change. Notice that the new equilibrium price now corresponds with 12 rents. We're not worried about the quantity. We only focus on the price. So what the increase in exports has done was to increase the value of the rent from 10 to 12 rents. Now, obviously, imports will have the opposite effect. All right. But uh, let's explain why. If there is an increase in imports, we are importing from other countries, we're buying from other countries. Now, if we are buying, for example, from Europe, we need to buy using the euro. So we demand more euros and less rents. So there will be less demand for our rents because we're not using the rent to buy from euro. We are using euros. So the demand curve now, remember, if there's less demand, the demand curve shifts to the left from D to D1. So the demand curve shifts from D to D1. The supply curve again doesn't shift. Now look what happened. We had um, the original equilibrium point was at 15 rands. But after the increase in imports, the equilibrium price changes now it actually goes down from 15 to 12, from 15 to 12 rents. So that is the impact of uh, imports, is that they reduce or they depreciate the value of the rent, whereas exports appreciate or increase the value of the rent. All right, I hope this was useful, grade 12s. Thank you.